All right, can go ahead and call this meeting to order. This is the regular Board of Elections September 5th, 2023 meeting. And um, Jennifer, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate that. All right. So the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Everyone take a motion to approve the agenda as second. written. Right. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the next item will be the approval of the minutes from the August 1st, 2023 meeting. Those were sent in advance. Um, does everyone have a chance to look them over? So moved. Thank you. Have a second. second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That shall carry as well. <clears throat> Next item is the unfinished business. Um, item A is the joint resolution between Pickens and Dawson County. Um, Stacy or Phil, did either one of you want to give us an update on the joint resolution? Um, we have spoke with um, the supervisor of elections for Dawson County. Um, she emailed back. Um, she had spoke with her attorney, so I think we're in the final stages. Um, and we just need a vote. Uh, but we think this is the final version. We didn't get confirmation of that from Dawson County today. But so if, if the chair would like, maybe you could go ahead and vote on this one, this resolution, and if they do have any changes, we're going to But I, they did have a change. We can operate that change. I think we're going to. If I can make a suggestion for our new board member to explain to him what that's all about. I did. Oh, okay. The okay. <laughs> have you seen a copy of the resolution? Can, can you send that to me? Yes. Okay. Is, right. the, is the final one the one we saw at the last meeting? Um, that is the. Nothing's changed since that final one. Yeah. So there's, what there's we saw at the last meeting is what you're asking us to vote on as we that we would adopt. Yes. Is that correct? They're, they've seen it. We're good at this point with what was written. So a vote for our board members to sign it and then we would send it to them for it to be approved by their board and their board chair sign it and then it would be official. Okay. All right, so I'll make a motion that we um, approve the resolution that Phil presented at the last meeting with regard to um, um, cooperative working with Dawson County. I'll second that. All right. Is there any additional discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. That passes. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, next item is new business and under new business we have a discussion of the 2024 election publication um, I believe um, there is a copy of this um, from a neighboring county in Georgia that has been shared in your notebook Ms. Godfrey if you want to elaborate please this is something that my office is working on for next year um, Paulding County um, gave us a copy of the one that they did back in 2020 and I just thought it was very informative for voters. Um, I have reached out to a couple people to get quotes um, to do this for us for next year, maybe not as large as this because um, there's some information in there that, that we could probably cut out but um, I've also reached out to the um, postmaster to see what would need to be done um, to get it the mailing um whether we need to get a postal permit or if it's something we can do by bulk mail so i'm getting quotes and all of that to be able to factor into um, our budget for next year 
but I would like to see something similar to this go out to every household in Pickens County with the dates of the elections for next year, um, information about um, the different precincts, um, information about our office and how to become a poll worker. Um, and that's something that I just wanted y'all to know that we were in the works of and if you have any suggestions on anything to put in there, please email me and let me know. I will say I've seen the um, color version of it and it's very eye-catching, it's very impressive and I think it's very informative as Stacy said. Um, and it would help maybe with some of the questions that they get phone calls a lot about. Um, I think it's a very handy tool. Um, red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different variations of some blues in there and, and that sort of thing. But yeah, it's very, very colorful, very eye-catching and impressive. Um, did you say every household or would it be registered vote, voters only? It would go to every household. So Stacy, if we see something that's missing in here, we just email you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you have any suggestions or something you would like to see in it, um, we're getting a quote for um, a 12 page and a 16 page booklet. Um, so, you know, we'll take into consideration any of your suggestions about what they would like to see in there as well. I think Stacy and I had a conversation even about like the dates and whether or not to keep those in so it would be reusable in future elections if we had copies left over that we could put at various places um but i think the dates are very easy to have in there i yeah. would want to i would want the dates to be in there mm -hmm. yeah. and we we already have the dates of all the elections um, and possible runoffs for next year so we could include all of that information on on one page in there is it um are you asking the printer well this might not really work i'm just thinking about dates so if the law changes at the next legislative session, that would be kind of unfortunate that we had already printed this pamphlet. Mm -hmm. um, but well, may, maybe nothing can be done about it. What about that. a separate page um, with the dates so that you wouldn't have to change the master? And Jackie and I had spoke about it, maybe putting the dates toward, back towards the end and then for the copies um, that we keep after that year we could just take that page out um, yeah i'm not thinking even thinking about the dates i'm thinking about things like drop boxes at the office and th things when i skimmed through this i saw there are things like that in there yeah and, it, and is, you know that could change in the next session yeah and what's exactly in here is not what we're going to put in there this was just a, a guide for us to go by to do something similar um, so I, I probably wouldn't put anything about drop boxes unless I just listed that the drop boxes at our office. How detailed are you going to put in the requesting mail mail in absentee ballots and things like that? Detailed information. Yeah, we'll have more detailed information once we receive that for next year um, about when deadlines are to, to drop off applications um, for an absentee ballot and um, how to register to vote. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to Deidre about this and gotten any feedback from her about anything she's heard from people, citizens in, in Paulding County? Yes, yeah, she actually, um, she got recognition for doing this um, and I can't remember exactly where, what organization it was from, but about putting information like this out for her voters just to keep them informed so when she shared it with us she had not received that recognition at that time but since then she has for this any other thoughts or comments yeah. good idea yeah mm -hmm. great idea mm -hmm. yeah i think it'd be very helpful so and please, um, any suggestions you have, let us know, and, and we'll start working on that. What's our time frame for getting to a printer? Or well, we're still working on quotes right now, but I would say as long as we had them copy um, by the beginning of um, January, that they could print it and get it out to us. 
um, and us get it in the mail before the end of January. Okay. Because we do start early but in <coughs> February for the presidential primary. Terry, are you thinking? Well, I'm just thinking about the mailing. I mean, this is like a nitty gritty thing, but I would just <coughs> say that based upon my experience in mailing bulk mail, uh, sometimes it can take a while for it to be delivered. <laughs> if it doesn't, you know what I mean? If it doesn't go first class, mm -hmm. well, it can take a while even if it goes first class. So mm -hmm. just when you're thinking about the dates of mailing, maybe well, if it, um, allow a little longer than you would sort of think would be required. If we have to do a permit, it will go first class. Um, but that's what we're working on right now is working with the post office to try to figure out if we have to get a postal permit or if it's something that can be sent out by bulk. If it is something that's sent out by bulk, they can only do 5,000 pieces per day at each post office. So that's something else to consider is, you know, and we'll work with the, the printer, but they'll have to do multiple drops if um, that post office has more than 5,000 people that we're delivering to. How many households can you get They're supposed to be working on getting me that number. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, we've, we've got 26,000 registered voters. So I know that a lot of households, you know, have multiple voters living within the household, but I've asked them to give me a, a number of how many households that it would be delivered to. It's a big but beneficial project, for mm -hmm. sure. So thank you for discovering this avenue to get the word out to the, to the voters. I appreciate it. So I'll go. <laughs> All right, so the next item on the agenda is staff comments. And we just finished up um, last month with qualifying. Actually, it feels like last week, but it would be before last. Um, we held qualifying for the city of Jasper, the city of Nelson, and town of Talking Rock. Town of Talking Rock did not have anyone um, run against the candidates, so we were able to cancel their election. So that means we'll only have two elections for November, which will be City of Jasper and City of Nelson. Um, early voting for that will begin on October the 16th and go through November the 3rd. And we'll have um, the 21st of October and the 28th for Saturday voting. We're going to start our poll worker training on September the 25th and 26th. Um, since we've only got the, the two um, municipalities, we're only going to do two days of training because we'll only have about four to five um, poll workers at each precinct. Um, so we'll do two and then if we have to do a makeup day later on for anybody working early voting, we'll do that as well. Um, we have a regional meeting in Gordon County on the 19th of this month that um, the staff will be going to. With this, um, this month and next month will be the last two that we have um, because we won't have one in November or December and then we won't have one next year because of getting ready for the presidential election. Um, so these will be the last two that we'll have this year. Um, our easy vote modules will go live for us this month. So staff will start training on the new modules that we have. Um, so we're excited to, to start learning on those and, and get campaign finance up and going um, for next year for the, the candidates to start doing filing that electronically themselves and um, we're going to work with Greg at Easy Vote on getting some training for the candidates about to have, how to set up their account and file those. Kathy Browning has decided to come back um, a little bit more than just during the election so she she's going to work some um, instead of just election day she's going to come in and help schedule poll workers. Um, Kathy worked with us part-time before um, and then last year was just really um, a lot having so many elections on her so she had decided to take some time back and and she called and said that she's ready to go and Roger's ready to go so they're gonna be ready ready for November um, our absentee ballot clerk position is um, online now so we're taking applications for it hopefully we'll have somebody um, in the next couple weeks to fill that position um, and get them in and start getting on the train for this November election and get a, an election under their belt before next year starts. And I have spoke with Graham. Um, he is our information specialist for the county. 
Um, he is looking into doing some informational videos for us about absentee and a couple different things to put on our website. Um, so as, as, as he progresses with that, I'll let the board know when they, they go live, you can go on and, and watch. He's done the one for our new office and he's just, he's super great at that and um, we're excited to work with him on getting some of that information out as well. You and Roger attended a training. Roger and I attended a training um, at CES um, just for um, election night um, information. It, it's one that I had already been to previously, and Roger had as well, but it was just a refresher. Mm -hmm. So we'll back here is a ready for mm -hmm. November as well. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any questions for Stacy about her report or the information she shared? So I have a, I have a question. What about the, uh, I always say this wrong, but the Gavio yeah, um, yeah. Conf conference in December? Are you guys attending that? Are we supposed to, what, what's the story with that? Um, we will, staff will attend that, mm -hmm. um, and then Mr. Frady um, will be able to attend virtually um, if he would like. But I think we had decided um, to swap out um, do two board members at a time um, and then back the beginning of this year we talked about um, anyone who had not attended if you had not attended before you could go in person or choose to do it virtually and then um, we decided just for the board members to do it virtually there was if there's going to be a new staff member, then the money would go toward the new that half person, person going. Yeah, new it. person going in, per, in person. person. New person Got in it. person. Yeah. And for Rick, Rick yes. he'll do virtual, virtual, right? Virtually. Okay. Yes, and I will okay. still bring back the booklets um, okay. for each board member to have a copy of those as well, as long as they they continue to do that. Um, they had talked at our last regional meeting about possibly um, going because it costs so much to print and then to purchase the binders that they, they talked about just doing them digitally and letting each election office print theirs out and bring it themselves. So that could be something that we see them go into in, in the future, but if so, I'll, we'll print them at the office and have them for all board members. Well, or you could just send it electronically too. Because if we're, I wanted mine printed last time so I could make notes mm -hmm. during the presentations, you know, but if I'm not attending, I won't be making any notes. <laughs> well, all right. Any other questions and comments? All right, moving on to the next item on the agenda, public comments. We are open for public comments. Do we have anybody that? Yes, ma'am. Let me go ahead and review for you our Public participation policy. This is for the Pickens County Board of Elections and Registration. Meetings of the Pickens County Board of Elections and Registration are held to conduct the affairs and business of the Office of Elections and Registration. These meetings are public as provided by the Georgia Open Meetings Act, Section 50-14-1B1 and 50-14-1C. <clears throat> wow. The I know, right? While the act does make provision for public participation during the meeting, Pickens County citizens will be invited to address the board at all regular meetings at the time shown on the agenda and in accordance with the rules established by the board. The rules are as follows. Citizens will be given five minutes to make their comments. Citizens may submit additional concerns in writing to the members of the board. Citizens may only speak once per stated meeting. Public participation in total will not exceed more than 30 minutes. The board will not permit anyone to become personally abusive or individual of individual board members or board employees or any member of the audience. And the board will not respond to comments or questions posed by citizens in their presentations, but will take those comments and questions under advisement. With that being said, Ms. Godfrey, do you have your timer? I'm not going anywhere close to five, so it's more like two. <laughs> thank you, Chairwoman, and thank you, Board. My name is Kristen Neighbors. I'm the State Director for All Voting is Local. We're a nonpartisan organization that advocates for policies that aid counties in running 
uh, safe and secure elections and here today to talk about hand counting. Across our state, some activists have been pushing to expand hand counting beyond the risk limiting audits that we already do after every federal cycle. I believe their efforts are misguided on two fronts. First, um, the activists overlooked the many drawbacks of hand, of hand counting. So even apart from the additional cost to taxpayers of a hand count, election experts overwhelmingly agree that machines are the way to get the most accurate count. Hand counting is tedious, it's monotonous, humans are not great at tedious and monotonous tasks. Um, my deputy and I were both monitors in two different counties for the RLA last year, and we saw honest human errors. No, no fraud, no shady business, but human errors made even when counting small batches of ballots. Um, there's a reason that calculators are more reliable than adding up numbers yourself with a pen and paper. Um, machine counts are much the same. Georgia County should follow election best practices and let the equipment do what it was built to do. The RLA results from 2022 proved that our machines counted the results accurately and that election officials conducted a secure election. The second reason I think that the push for hand counting is misguided is I see these arguments coming from the same people who keep spreading lies about our elections <coughs> and the security of our elections. Uh, we're living in a time of rampant disinformation and conspiracy theories. Uh, these cannot be the basis for introducing policies and practices that don't work. Uh, to have a functioning democracy, we must have confidence that election officials have the tools and resources to count every vote and ensure that elections are concluded quickly, securely, transparently, and accurately. Hand counting every ballot accomplishes none of these. Uh, discrepancies between the machine count and the hand count are to be expected due to human error, but any such discrepancy, however small it might be, could be used to cast doubt over the final count or fuel conspiracy theories possibly even about the hardworking election workers conducting the count. So please reject any pressure to hand count in Pickens County. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment? Okay. All right, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is board comments. And I would like to start by welcoming Rick. Thank, Thank you. you for being here and being a part of this board and we look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Again, uh, welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, uh, good luck. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. And uh, as always, the uh, staff is awesome. I appreciate that. Make sure you spread that around <laughs> with your staff because they're not all here. That's right. That's all I have. Ditto. <laughs> Me too. Ditto to all that. <laughs> Uh, I thank everybody. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. All right. And on that note, do I have a motion to adjourn? A motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Meeting adjourned.